Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly and in this video we'll be learning about Swift UI's binding. So let's go ahead and get started. Well let's say that we are trying to build something which is a light bulb, meaning we can turn it on and we can turn it off. So how would we go about creating a light bulb application? Now we have many different ways of doing that. Let's go ahead and first display a light bulb. So I can go ahead and say image and system name. And I can simply go ahead and say light bulb dot, well, light bulb should be okay. And let's go ahead and see that if it creates a light bulb with a B, there we go. So it does work. And I can go ahead and also uh, make the font a little bit larger so we can see the light bulb. There we go. Now what I want to do is if I tap on the light bulb, I want to change it. I want to fill it up. And just to see what fill looks like, I can simply say dot fill and this is the fill light bulb, what it looks like. But I want to do it on the tap. All right. So one of the ways that I can do that is I can group them or put it inside a group view. And based on a condition inside the group view, I can return the right bulb, light bulb. So if this is actually tapped, so on tap gesture, then I can do something to make the light bulb change image. Now for this, I'm gonna use the state. So let's go ahead and first declare the state private var is on, which is boolean, and it is false. Now I can go ahead and set the state whenever we tap on the group. So is on dot toggle to toggle it on and off. Based on the value of on and off, we can go ahead and return something over here, a different kind of image. So inside the group, I can make a if condition if I want to. I can say if it is on, then I can go ahead and return an image, which with a system name, light bulb dot fill, because we want to show it as fill. Else we can go ahead and return the light bulb, which is a default one, which is not filled, which is empty. And for the fill one, we can even go ahead and make this a little bit larger, so large title. And we can also change the foreground color to be color.yellow. Let's go ahead and refresh our code. And let's go ahead and run this. If I click on the light bulb, you can see it is changing. If I click on it, it's now filled, it's on, and now it's off. It's on, it's off. This is all great. Now we have the code that we know it is working correctly. It will be a good idea to use this code to create some sort of a reusable light bulb control. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a light bulb control or a view. It needs to have a body which is going to return some sort of a view. And then we can use the same exact thing that we were doing before based on some condition. So if the light bulb is on, then we can do something. And if the light bulb is off, then we can do something. So how can we accomplish that part? Well, we will check over here. If is on, then we can go ahead and display the light bulb. So I can go ahead and pretty much copy all of this stuff. Let's do all of this. There is no is on property. So we need to figure this out. We will go ahead and make sure that when you're creating a light bulb, you are changing or you are sorry, passing the property, which in this case is is on. Now, what's the reason of this binding property? And why have we decorated it with binding property wrapper? 
The reason is that whenever you pass something as a bindable property, the child element, which in this case will be light bulb, because I'm just going to replace all of this with a light bulb right over here, light bulb, and I will be able to pass in the is on property as a bindable. This means that the light bulb, which is a child control or a child view, will be able to change the value of this is on bindable property that we're passing. This means that whenever this property changes, even though it changes somewhere, which it doesn't, but even though it changes over here, since it's a bindable property, it is going to get changed. Whenever you change this property, it's going to change this property in the parent view. And then the parent view can take some action. But right now, we don't even have a on tab gesture, so it's really not going to change anything. So let's go ahead and do on group dot on tab gesture. And then I can change this property is on dot toggle. Once again, since we are decorating this as a at binding property wrapper, when you pass this property, it goes from here, which is actually state, it goes here to the bindable property. And now whenever you change the property because you clicked on the image, this value is going to toggle. And when this toggle is going to tell the parent, which is the content view that it has toggled. So the content view can also take some action. What action do we want to do with the content view? Well, maybe we can change the background color of the view. So let's go ahead and do one thing. Let's go ahead and put this inside a vertical stack, which I don't see. Oh, here we go, vertical stack, great. And make sure that that vertical stack is actually completely filling the space. Let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, so based on when the light bulb view changes its property inside the light bulb view, the parent is also going to re-render since this is a bindable property. And during that re-render, we can change the background color. So I can go ahead and I can say background. If is is on, then color dot black. Else we can go ahead and say color dot white. And also I want to go ahead and ignore all the edges so that it's completely filling up. Let's go ahead and run our application and see what happens. See that? Whenever we turn on the light, using the light bulb view, using this code, it changes the is on property. But since, since the is on property is marked with binding, the person who was sending this property also get change. And whenever this property gets changed, it re-renders our view again. And since it is changed, it is no longer white and the light is on, the bulb is on, and then we change the background color to black. So the whole point of using the binding property wrapper is to make sure that the child controls, which in this case is light bulb, will be able to change some sort of a property which the parent can also use or which the parent was passing. So in other words, you can think of it as the binding will allow the child to communicate with the parent and change the property on the parent so that the parent, in this case, can re-render. As you can see over here, when I click on the, or I tap on this bulb, the parent is actually changing color between black and white. So this is the binding property. And the next time I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into the environment object. If you like this video and want to support my work, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see that I have a lot of courses, including SIF UI, Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. It's a 21 hour course. Apart from that, I have courses on mastering RxSwift, writing clean code, MVVM design, 
MVVM design and Swift UI combined uh, Swift UI with Firebase right here and a lot more courses. So I'm sure you'll be able to find the course that you're looking for. Uh, thank you so much. And if you have any comments, go ahead and write in the comment section and go ahead and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Have a great day.